No, I just started the recording. Sorry, I forgot. You weren't saying anything anyway. <laughs> I just, that's, that's funny, Guruji Jang, because I just told my life partner I am about to hook up with a bunch of others that are trying to talk about the non-knowing, the nothing. <laughs> How are we going to do that? Okay. And you just said that to me. <laughs> Makes me laugh. We were saying nothing. That's all you can really say. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> <laughs> You know, like Maharaj says, all these little talks are just spiritual entertainment. Mm -hmm. you know? And they're pointing to remain with your selfless self. That's it. Mm -hmm. Always talking about remain with your selfless self. And, uh, but mm -hmm. if you're remaining with your selfless self, then these talks are just a little blip and, oh, okay, that's it. And finish and now we're here. And if you're not yet remaining with your selfless self, then this just directs you. Except your selfless self, there's no God, no Brahman, no Paramatma, no Master. Nothing's there. So remain with your selfless self. And while you're believing yourself to be a body, it seems that there is a talk going on. When you know yourself in a real sense, this it, it like it's it's just okay. There's some dancing lights on the screen for a little while. I will say that I'm moving uh, to a new apartment and in the process nice. of packing and all this sort of stuff. And the most cool thing is you would think that that would be a time where you would say, oh, you know, I'm taking the touch of the world or, or whatever. But it's a time of even more letting go. It's, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's, it's just beautiful unfolding you know, going on Amazon and ordering some boxes and then ordering these little wardrobe boxes and different things and all the stuff starts arriving at the house and it just sits for a day or two with no activity. And then there's some activity going and picking up these boxes and starting to, to pack this and pack that, but there's not, there's no, it's, it's, uh, It, it's really, you know, you would think that even the whole thing, when, when my landlord came to me and he said, listen, I'm going to be uh, changing the whole house and all this kind of stuff. So your apartment is going to go away. You need to look for another place. And I just went online and looked for another place and found another place and signed a lease and did all this. And it, it, it was just like, it, there was nothing. There's no like, oh, John has to look for a new place or John has to pack or how am I going to do this? How am I going to do that? Even the new place said, you can't have these pictures like hanging on the wall. So I did say, master, what to do? And then the next thing I know, there's these magnetic poster thingies that you, you clip and it'll hang very nicely. And then there's these uh, little strips they stick on the wall, but they don't damage the wall and the poster will hang. So it's like selfless self just communicating with its own self in a most beautiful fashion without there being any doership, any sense of doing. There's no credit taken and renting the van. Okay, go online, click, click. Okay. Okay, let's rent this van. Da, da, da. Boom, boom. That's it. 
packing is being done very nicely without me having to pack. It's, it's just, uh, this is life, you know? And I know that if I planted an anchor of a me in this, there would be decisions to make. There would be a lot of worrying about, will this match this? And will that happen here? And even the move-in, uh, they said, you can pick up the keys between 2 and 2.30, and then you can have the elevator between 2.30 and 4.30 or, or whatever. But to give yourself enough time. And, and I just said, okay, let's do that. Boom. That's it. And it's, it's just. Uh... Mm -hmm. oh. we, were, we were talking about it a couple of weeks ago about how do I do my job and remain with my selfless self. Well, from this little experience of non-experiencing packing without packing, I would say the more personal it seems, the more you remain with your selfless self. The joy of seeing your own self just kind of animate this body and move around and do what needs to be done without any stress, without any thinking, without any anything. And, you know, they say moving is one of those times like, you know, getting married, getting uh, divorced, uh, having a child, moving. All these different things are at like, you know, psychologists say are, are at a stress level or, or whatever. And it's just most beautiful. I just thank master in every moment. Even the clothes. I wound up buying these these large bags that zip. And I didn't know to do that, but it was just like, okay, what to do? Some of the clothes, click, click, click. It sent to Amazon. And it's so nice that the boxes arrive, but there's not like a, oh, the boxes came. I have to do something. No, boxes arrive and they sit for a few days. And then it's just, okay, now we're doing this. This is life. You know, and, and this is the blessing of, of having a master and devoting and, and, and being with your own selfless self. Master says you are not body. So why worry about body-based things? And even knowing you're not a body, you, you can still say, well, I know I'm not a body, but this is this in particular, that this is an important thing. I, I need to be doing something. No, Honestly, the, what needs to be done is being done without there needing to be a doer doing it. It's just a... It's like floating, you know? You go out into the ocean and the waves are coming. If you try to like swim and the waves just knock you and, and take you out. But if you just float, you just, oh, there's a wave. Oh, there's another wave. But you're just floating. There's no sense of you because the moment, if you're in a waves, like when we went to Ocean City, if you're in a waves and you have the concept of, I have to do something, that wave knocks you down. You know, if you're, if you're floating and then suddenly you're like, oh, I want to make sure no big waves are coming. Boom, you get taken out. But if you're just floating, going along and, and, the, you don't even know that the waves, are the waves big or are the waves small? You don't know. Because you're just, uh, uh. But the moment you sit there and you try to identify a wave and say, oh, this is a big wave. I really need to prepare. Wham. <laughs> it's very nice. I had a lot of trouble signing on today. You said there was another uh, access point where you don't have to sign in. What, what is that? Yeah, you just go to, uh, well, if you go to the YouTube channel, the link for Ramakant Maharaj Dakshina.net, you click that, it takes you to the home page. You scroll down a little bit, you click that link, and you're here. I think you can also get to the website by spontaneous devotion. 
dot net. That might be easier than Ramakant Maharaj Dakshina. But spontaneous devotion dot net. And again, you should see a website. And the website, you scroll down. That's where, you know, there's all recordings. When this recording finishes, it'll be up uh, shortly after. It'll also be on YouTube. And the link to the website is on YouTube. Um, but it's just on the homepage there. You scroll down, click, and join the meeting. Also, if there's not going to be a meeting, then there's no link, and it'll let you know the next meeting is not for a while, so or, or not until next week or something like that. So it's it's always good to to check there. But yeah, you don't have to put in a code or numbers or a password or anything. It's all just click a link and and join. Speaking of that, we haven't heard from Andrew in a while. Yeah, really. Yeah, I wonder what's going on. Yeah, I don't know if he, uh, because we're not sending out the emails, he doesn't have the, oh, uh, I just noticed that we hadn't been with Andrew. Somebody stole my wallet today. I guess I'm supposed to just let it go, but um, I wish they'd just give me my stuff back they can't use. Oh. And the credit cards are all canceled anyway, so. Right, right. Well, it may turn up. Uh, yeah, mm. I'm hoping I'm hoping they'll just, you know, throw it somewhere, or, you know, like in a post box or something that I can just, you know, have it back. It's okay. Don't worry about it. It's okay. It's us, you know, hurting, hurting ourselves, loving ourselves, hating ourselves. It's okay. You're okay, so. No, I'm okay. <laughs> yeah, that's all. That's all. That fucking. Excuse me. That's all. That <laughs> so sorry. Man. Well, and the thing is, again, the spontaneous action you did. You, what happens while it gets stolen? Cancel credit cards. Mm -hmm. You know, talk, call police or whatever. Do a police report. Do this. Do that. And then there's nothing more. Mm -hmm. And yeah, then you just, was. you just wait, basically, without waiting. And this is a good time, too, to observe your mind, what your mind is saying about this situation. And if it's saying anything. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because as it says more, okay, there's still something there that thinks there's something. And that thinks there's something that can be done. And as Maharaj says, even if you think intellectually, there's nothing that you can do no. at all. No. But this mind flow will say, oh, we should be doing this or doing that or what is this or how this is happening over here. No, 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 no. Just remain. Hmm. And this, this, is, this is the time just, okay. I mean, these things happen there. All kinds of stuff happens in this non-happening existence. Yeah. Well, at least <laughs> you mean I'm not physically harmed or anything, you know. Exactly the really bad things exactly and like maharaj says too this is a five elemental body there's going to be disturbance in the five elements even if you have no mind complete at peace and you're not identified with your body the body can still do things and send signals it's a it's an instrument mm -hmm. it's just not mm -hmm. needed that you have a mind that interprets what these signals are it's just, okay, there's a disturbance in the five elements. 
my stomach aches or something like this. It's just disturbance in the five elemental body. It's going to be. But you like, still you still do th something about it, like take alka cells here or something. Sure, you go and you take your like I have the little pink stuff. I like the Pepto Bismol. You take a shot of that, and usually, it's good. So, but there's that's like Maharaj says. You you pick up the tea, you drink the tea, you put it down. Yeah. And even you can say, okay, master, what am I to learn from this? Or, okay, master, walk with me through this. You know, any kind of circumstance that life is happening. Okay, master, this is a little bit too much. I know I'm not body, but I and the master are one. Be with me. Oof. remove this sense of me and everything's okay. And like I said, with the, with the pictures, I said, okay, master, I'm going to this place. I can't hang the photos, what to do. I, I love the pictures here, you know, I, I, I want to, to, to continue this and go on Amazon, find these little magnetic thingies. They're coming when they come, I'll measure them and see, okay, this is for the big poster, then order a different one for the little poster and we're done. Rather than sit there and give it over to mind and say, well, if we take down the pictures, you know, and how will I feel about that and this and that? No, no, no. Okay, Master, what to do? Because as Maharaj says, the response will come from within. There's only within. So, <laughs> but the response, you'll dialogue with your selfless self. Because the entire world is projected on your presence. So you're dialoguing with yourself using this concept of world You sort of need a body to do that, don't you? The dialogue with your own self? Yeah, the body is not the problem. The problem is I am the body. Yeah. The body is here. And as long as it's available, is used as an instrument to do what needs to be done in the moment. But I am not body. I take care of the body, like Maharaj says. You don't just say, I am not body, and then don't eat. Because this body is a food body. It requires food to sustain itself. It's made out of food. All the food you eat is what you call yourself as, which is kind of funny. That's why Siddhar Meshwar Maharaj kind of makes fun of that and says, all the food you eat, eat that's what you call yourself. And... Uh, you know, from a small baby, you eat the food and you get larger and larger. Well, where, where did this growth come from? It came from the food you eat. So, but you are not what you eat. <laughs> you are not this food body. Well, we're, we're calling uh, a cause and effect and, and believing that that's what, what makes things what they are. Well, when you identify with a body, you have to have cause and effect. You have to have some kind of relation to objects when you consider yourself to be an object. Just like the concept of birth and death. You see yourself as a body and you see other bodies die and you say, oh, I can die. No. This body will perish, but you very much are. 
And now this is for you to discover for your own self. We need cause and effect to make sense of things, but we take it a step too far and give uh, like uh, act reality to the concept of rather than uh, just be uh, without concept. Well, the mind and thoughts are labeling. They use labels to differentiate objects. To say this is an apple and this is an orange. And the mind is differentiating because there's objects. You're an object holding an apple and an orange. In reality, this is not true. You are the formlessness in which these objects are all appearing. And then you're this identification with a thought stream of this is me and these are apple and orange. None of that's true. And see, once you stop believing yourself to be a body, then mind stops because mind is just there to kind of interpret a world. But if you're not in the world, you're just kind of here, but you're no longer interpreting this world through mind. And that's how this packing is happening. Just okay, in the moment, this packing is happening. But there's no packer. And there's really no activity of packing. It's just, again, spontaneous action in the moment. And then after this action is, you look and you say, oh, clothes are packed. But there's no identification with, I pack the clothes. There's, there's no, there's no subject object duality in this way. Uh, you're not any different before the clothes were packed and, and after the clothes were packed. It doesn't, it doesn't really change you. Well, you can see that there's a change in the appearance. The clothes used to be in this little wardrobe thingy, and now they're in these boxes with a, a, you know, you hang them like this in the box. So they appear, the appearance has changed. No, I have not changed. But unless we identify with time, then we could say, well, I have changed. I am a different person now. Now I'm a person with a packed box where it was before. Well, but I'm not, the, I'm not a person. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I know that I'm, I'm nothing. And yet I have the utilization of this body. But I don't identify this body as myself. Because in order to identify this body as myself, I have to flow along with the thoughts and say that I'm someone doing these things. It leads to all kinds of problems, mental um, suffering. Yeah, without a mind, who are you? This mind is like the source of the, the appearance of limitation. That's why Maharaj says you can fly without wings, because flight is a concept that's removed automatically when you know yourself in a real sense. And then, then, uh, like I was going through, the, you know, this through my usual uh, contemplation today. After well, yeah, looking at uh, wake, waking up and getting a feel for what it was like when I was asleep. And then, uh, why? Uh, well, that's that's what I have to do to try to to recognize what I what I'm not. Uh, I have to wake up and, and look at well, why am I feeling like I am like I'm Keith? Whereas you know, when I was asleep, my dreams were sort of pointing the way to to the fact that uh, I am not. Nothing is what I think it is. My my dreams actually kind of uh, help point me that that direction to. to Just that. always know that anything you can perceive, or know, or experience, is not you. And again, like Maharaj says, even if you think intellectually, how can you be your experience? Right. H how can you be knowledge, knowing something? Anything that can be known is not your own self. You're the knower. 
It's like thinking you're a wall or something. You, you are nothing. And even to say you're the knower is not exactly true because you're, you're in a no knowing state until the appearance of knowingness as an object is there to be known. But you're not. So I understand you say, okay, I go through this routine and I look at the dream. And we talk about, okay, dream and waking state is the same and this and that, but there's no division because you're formless. And so anything that you can perceive is not you. Anything that you can know is not you. Anything that you can see is not you. So you could say you are the seer, you are the knower, but all of that is only known through the bubble of illusion, through the consciousness, whatever you want to call it. So it's, it's otherwise, kind of, you're 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 knowing nothing. I sort of have to go through that process each day, though, to to help break the. Uh... Because there's still a key that goes through a process. And then, like it then does break, and like like right now, now I eventually not every day but eventually get to that state of bliss where there really is nothing more to say and uh and that sometimes there's a residual bliss that uh i recognize it's like a formless form or something that's there and there's really uh, there's no question about it it just is what it is well that's the sense of presence yeah but again from the position of knowing the sense of presence this presence has appeared and you're the knower of this presence. So there's no need to search for the bliss or search for the presence. It's just, it's here. When I don't feel, when I realize that I'm not feeling it or recognizing it, I do, I do feel a need to search for it. Well, remember and Maharaj says, there is peace. You are disturbing the peace. By right. trying to find the peace, trying to find the bliss, trying to find the presence, you're creating a disturbance of, I am not this, but you are that. Nothing, course, nothing. Of course, nothing. the mantra is sort of like an instant way of letting go of that. Mantra erases all the illusory layers on your presence. It erases all the illusory thinking. And all this illusory thinking is, I am not that. I need to find this. I need self-realization. I need, uh, I don't know, some kind of something. You create, <laughs> you imagine you need something and then disturb yourself with this desire of needing this something that's not needed. But because you've created a desire for something, you've now disturbed yourself and you're seeking something. It created, you create your own sense of separation when there is exactly one. you create the appearance of separation mm -hmm. there's never a separate there cannot be a separation because just think for a moment space we use the example of space space is never separated you can't really create anything either with the mind space is never separated the space in this room the space in that room even with the door closed, the space doesn't know, oh, I'm being contained or whatever. It's not like this. There's no difference. No, and that's why the formlessness can never be form. Forms are appearance within the formlessness that you are. Hmm. When you stop believing yourself to be a body, this mind will be no more. Because what can the mind say about formless you? Remember, mind, ego, intellect, they came along with the body. Well, my mind the formlessness said, is prior to body. Not my mind, says. <laughs> These flow of thoughts are there, and I'm jumping into the mix. Because I believe myself to be Keith, and this might be an important thought for Keith. Which is why, we, in the very beginning, I said packing and moving is a very important thing, you would think. But... In the most important thing, you let go and remain with your selfless self even more so. And what a joy. Like, it's like hiring movers. <laughs> mm -hmm.
<laughs> you sit back on the couch. Everybody's doing all the activity. Enjoy. Could I, could I say something? Who yes, yes, you? please. Um, yeah, this is kind of strange. But uh, yesterday or a few days ago, I have no recollection. Uh, sincerely, uh, I was at the dinner at the table. I eat. This body eats once a day. It has a ritual. Uh, and um, suddenly, uh, the, I, I, I stopped tasting the food. And um, short, long story short, I end up having like a paralysis. Um, so imagine the moment, you know, and I automatically, I mean, the mantra is still going from before that moment ignited. And, uh, and automatically, I look at my, uh, I, I see uh, my life partner staring at me. And as if I'm in a psychedelic trip, as if I'm le I have left my body and gone back straight to the non-knowing, you know, and I just start seeing the body go through this. And I, it, it was this, as if I was watching my doll go through the same problem. You know, I was totally detached as it was just so um, not realer than usual, but it was... Um, I thought I was already saying bye, you know, I was already dissolving and I figured, okay, first it's my face, then it's my throat. And so me and my life partner have come to an agreement when the last moment arrives, I would just do this in order not to spark any thought in my mind so I can go straight home at all. It was a very, um, I felt the body feel a lot of fear, you know, a lot of fear. And, and I just want to say thanks because this whole Believe it or not, this whole conversation has answered a lot of things and made me feel very comfortable because it was a very scary thing for the body, you know. Uh, even though I was so, oh, I was, I was not affected. And everything you're saying about moving, about things just happening, I was so not ready to leave and not, not ready to leave. I, I was already gone, you know. And I just wanted to share that because I haven't told many people, not even my own mother, you know. And, uh, so now they, they, I, I found myself in the hospital. You know, my wife and my life partner is just, as you said, floating me, carrying me. And I end up uh, right now here with you guys, you know, and that's how I feel everything ha has been going. So I appreciate the talk because it seemed to, you know, so I'm, um, they have me on prednisone. They have given the body prednisone. It has reduced inflammation. I, they, they think it's, it has been caused by years of uh, disc damage and compression to my neck and my back, you know, so whatever. But I just wanted to share that, you know, that I had you guys in my mind. I had all this in, in my mind and I, I was ready to leave, you know. <laughs> but, uh, the squeak or something? This yeah, I, I guess they, um, they say some kind of paralysis, it starts like it affected this eye and this side of the mouth. Mm. I slowly, I slowly see the, the strength coming back that um, but it, it hasn't affected me one bit, you know? I feel better than ever, actually, you know? The, the prednisone seems to be reducing inflammation caused by the spinal problems, you know? So, but whatever, you know, I, I just wanted to share that moment how. I'm not affected, but I, I appreciate the company, you know. I, I, I had you guys in mind at that moment too, because it's all it all it all comes together, you know. It's all, you know, I don't know. Excuse me, Guruji John. <laughs> Just yeah. It, it it could be packing or it could be being paralyzed. It's all, all spontaneous, you know no passion involved, you know, and I, and I felt that, I felt that it was, it was, it, it was a horrible feedback. It was a horrible way to experience that disconnection that, but, <laughs> but I was amazed, you know, I was really amazed, you know. Mm. Hmm. I, I know when it, I, I always remember Nisarga Data saying how his sickness was impressed on his consciousness. And that, that, oh, that brought me so much calm, like, and I'm not my consciousness. I'm, I observe my consciousness and, and that brought me a lot of calm, you know? Oh man, so much calm. Even though everything around me was breaking down, you know? 
that I'm here. Tuesday talks. Hmm. Thank you. I've been crying, this body's been crying a lot. And I, I just remember hearing Nisarga and Rama can't say that a Yani just watches the body cry if it needs to. It doesn't fight that, you know, not even that. You just, you're not those tears either, you know. It's crazy, the emotional body, you know. It's always there, like you say, you know. My God. And there is no birth and death. Oh, oh, um. <laughs> and if there's um. a belief that I'm born, then there's a belief that I die. When I know myself yeah. as that unborn, and not even unborn, unborn is only a concept that came along with the body. And we learned in this body based delusion what unborn is. Unborn is nothing. Yeah. This experience of being in the body based delusion is a long dream. And it's not true. But you were never born, you will never die. And even to say eternal is kind of strange because eternal gives some kind of concept of time and formlessness, the space in the room does not know time. Mm 